Hey everybody, this is Sunday, March 17th, and today's lesson is Grace in the Garden. And the memory text again is 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 22. For as in Adam all die, so in Christ all will be made alive. And uh, just remember we're trying to memorize this text this week. Uh, if you wind up doing it, feel free to post a video of yourself reciting this verse uh, just to kind of inspire the rest of us to get it done. Uh, the lesson starts off by uh, talking about Adam and Eve being made in perfection in the image of God chose to disobey and disregard God's law. And sometimes we think that they... Uh, we're somehow not aware of the ramifications of eating from that fruit. But it's clear that when the serpent asked Eve if she would eat from the fruit, she clearly recited God's command in saying, In the day that we eat of the fruit of that tree, we will surely die. She was clear, they were both clear on what God's position was and they intentionally chose to disobey Him. Though they both had their different reasons, they both sinned. Eve, for the hope of achieving an experience that she previously was denied, and Adam, the fear of losing something he already had. In the same respect, we sin for about the same reasons, most of the time at least. Fear of losing perhaps a job, or a friendship, or money, or riches. Uh, we choose to disregard God's law and will in order to preserve what we already have. Or like Eve, we... Uh, see the opportunity to experience some sort of pleasure that God has forbidden and we disregard God's position or will in order to experience this pleasure or realize this desire. For whatever the reason is, we enter into sin intelligently and choosing uh, to disregard God's position and then at the same time accepting the position of the serpent. And into this context God enters in Genesis chapter 3 verses uh, 9 through 15 and we'll read that real quick. Genesis chapter 3 verses uh, 9 through 15 and the Lord God called unto Adam and said unto him, Where art thou? And he said, I heard thy voice in the garden, and I was afraid, because I was naked, and I hid myself. And he said, Who told thee that thou wast naked? Hast thou eaten of the tree whereof I commanded thee that thou shouldest not eat? And the man said, The woman whom thou gavest to be with me, she gave me of the tree, and I did eat. And the Lord God said unto the woman, What is this that thou hast done? And the woman said, The serpent beguiled me, and I did eat. And the Lord God said unto the serpent, Because thou hast done this, thou art cursed above all cattle, and above every beast of the field. Upon thy belly shalt thou go, and thus shalt thou eat all the days of thy life. And I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed, it shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. Here we see that God enters into the situation with questions. Where are you, Adam? Who told you you were naked? Did you do what I asked you not to do? God asked these questions not because he needed information, gathering uh, the facts because God knows everything. What he was trying to do is bring Adam and Eve uh, mentally uh, bring them into a re uh, uh, make them aware of what their current situation had become. Help them to understand what the immediate effects of sin uh, was 
in their life. Previously, when God would enter into the garden, Adam and Eve would run towards them, and now they were running away from him. Sin had completely changed the dynamics of man's relationship with heaven and man's relationship towards Satan. Because in the promise of, of, of uh, the first gospel promise that we found in verse 15, where God says, I will put enmity between you and the woman, uh, here we see that the relationship between man and the uh, serpent is one of friendship. That what was once a stranger was now a friend. And God knew that in obeying Lucifer, man had brought themselves under the power and influence of the enemy. And in order for man to be fit in, uh, back into communion with heaven, he would have to perform a supernatural miracle in the heart of man in order for them to hate the ways of Satan and love the ways of God. And this is something that Adam and Eve were not aware of. And sometimes something that we are not aware of. That before God perform, performs the miracle in our hearts, we love the ways of the serpent. And we hate the ways of God. But he made the promise here in the garden that he would change all of that for whoever would desire it. And that is the first gospel promise that we receive in the Bible. And there's another uh, gift that God gives in verse uh, 21, which we'll read real quick, Genesis 3.21, where God gives another uh, benefit towards humanity. Unto Adam also and to his wife did the Lord God make coats of skins and clothe them. Here we see that when Adam and Eve were aware of their nakedness, they made for themselves uh, garments of leaves. And this was not fit in God's eyes for clothing for his children. So he prepared for Adam coats of skins. But it's obvious that you cannot have coats of animal skins without first having the death of the animal. And this experience, this sacrifice for Adam's benefit, must have left a dramatic impact on Adam and Eve's psyche. Because for the first time in the universe, death was experienced. This is something that Adam and Eve had never seen or had the concept of before. Death is kind of a part of our culture. We just kind of know when we live in this world, we're going to die eventually. In order for us to eat a burger, an animal just needs to die. It's just a part of life. But in this context, death was an unknown. Something never before experienced, not by Adam and Eve, not by angels, not by Lucifer, not by God. This was something unheard of and completely tragic. And when it happened, it totally uh, it, it horrified Adam to watch, to realize that this lamb or this animal was who had no reason to suffer the way it did, died because of the decisions that Adam and Eve made. And we know that it must have been uh, an awful reminder, sense of weight upon Adam every time he looked down upon his garment or felt its warmth to remember that it was because of his sins that this covering was made for him. Now, this animal sacrifice was just a symbol of Jesus Christ who through his death would cover the nakedness of all of mankind. He would wipe away our record of sin. And it just 
brings on home if we realize the gravity of that sacrifice. The fact that God in the, in the body of Christ died on our behalf. Here we see the gospel truth that when God received what he did not deserve, which was rebellion against his law and disobedience, he in turn gave humanity what they did not deserve, love and mercy and salvation. And this is what we call amazing grace, something that we all do not deserve because we all have fallen short of the glory of God. And the lesson ends with a challenge, which I would like to challenge all of you with. No doubt we all should be very appreciative, to say the least, of God's grace to us. What better way to reveal that appreciation than to show grace to others? To whom could you show some grace right now, however undeserving he or she may be? Uh, I challenge you to go find that special someone and show them grace just the way you expect God to show grace to you. That was Sunday's lesson. Feel free everybody to please comment either questions or things that you got out of the study uh, in your own personal studies. Post your comments or make your own videos. I look forward to hearing from all of you. And I will see you tomorrow.